America's obsession with good health and exercise is leading to a boom in yoga. And one person at the forefront of the movement is turning up the heat with his torture chamber approach to the practice. Bikram Chowdhury's his name, and though his postures are from India, the Bikram approach is all American. He's built a multi-million dollar yoga empire on the sweat of his legions of followers. And by sweat, we mean sweat. Welcome to Bikram's torture chamber to kill yourself for the next 90 minutes. This is Bikram Chowdhury. He whips his class, or as he calls it, torture chamber, into shape, dressed in nothing but a Rolex and a Speedo. Sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down more. This 59-year-old yoga guru pushes his students to contort till it hurts in a room heated to well over 100 degrees. I don't sell cheesecake. <laughs> you know that. So, you come there to suffer. If you don't suffer, you don't get anything. Nothing easy in life. You're calling it a torture chamber. I've never heard of anything like this pertaining to yoga. That's my yoga is. That's the my yoga I bring it from India. It's supposed to be relaxing, meditative. No, that's, that's the biggest problem in America. That's the way yoga introduced to America. Yoga means sit and close your eyes and you look at the lamp or look at the crystal and, and relax. meditate. No? Absolutely not. Absolutely, you are not ready for that kind of yoga. Charge your body forward. For Bikram, meditation starts on the outside, pushing the body to its extreme. You use the body as a medium to bring the mind back to the brain. Perfect marriage between body and mind. Then you can reach the knock the door to the spirit. In these sequences, in 105 degree heat, you think maybe people can find Nothing. it? Nothing. That's the only way it works. It works, he says, because of the heat, which loosens the body and allows the muscles and tendons to go farther and stretch even more. Yeah. I did it once, yes. The time came for me to One, check two, it out three, myself. Four, Is anybody here first time never did my class before? Welcome to Bikram Torture Chamber and torture chamber is right. Come down and kick you. You got it, Mika. Look at that. Woo! Kick your leg back. The heat may make the body more limber, but it does nothing to stop this first time Bikram student's pain. It's hot. It's so hot in there. Yes, it is hot. One doctor we spoke to says there should be a warning before you go into a Bikram yoga class. What warning? Make sure you hydrate yourself. Make sure you modify the poses so that you don't push your body too hard. Tell, tell the doctor I said to start chicken farm. You, you don't think he has of a Of course point? not. What are you talking about? What do you think I'm doing all this life, all these years? Judging by Bikram, here he is 20 years ago, looking not too different than he does today, his hot yoga looks to be a great path to preserving and improving health. Bikram believes medical science will prove his yoga is good for you. He's collaborating with two separate clinical trials with doctors from the University of Southern California and Wyckoff Heights Medical Center in New York to study Bikram yoga's effect on bone density and the overall benefits of yoga. But Hollywood has been swearing by Bikram for decades. Name for me some of your high-profile clients. Quincy Jones, Michael Jackson, Madonna, uh, Candice Bergen, uh, Brooke Shield, I mean, uh, it's endless. They all do Bikram? All do Bikram. Years and years and years and years and years. Who else does Bikram have on his list? None other than the 37th President of the United States. Which brings us to the story of how this Indian guru came to America in the first place, which, true or not, has become a part of Bikram's own personal folklore. It was 1972, and President Nixon was in the South Pacific when he came down with an attack of phlebitis. Bikram says he was summoned and proceeded to give President Nixon his special hot treatment. He got up, shaved, put the dress, tie, suit, went for meeting. And he asked me first thing, sir, who are you? Are you an Indian black magician? That's the language he used it. I said, no, what are you? I'm a yogi. 
Bikram says Nixon was so happy with the treatment that he gave the Indian yogi an open invitation to come and live in the United States. So the world has President Nixon to thank for Bikram to 110 percent. And once in America, Bikram embraced the American way. How? Franchise. There's a Bikram studio in almost every major city in America, 1,200 and climbing worldwide. With more than a million students served, Bikram Yoga has earned the nickname Mick Yoga. Do you like that analogy, the McDonald's of yoga? Why not? What's wrong with that? I eat Big Mac. That means, they means correct me if I'm wrong, is getting more popular, you know, spreading out all over like McDonald's. That's, I think, they mean it. Nothing wrong with that? No, I don't think anything wrong. And just as that Big Mac tastes the same in every McDonald's, Bikram wants every yoga student to have exactly the same experience no matter which Bikram studio they visit. So for around $5,000 a pop, plus an occasional refresher course, Bikram teaches the teachers what makes Bikram Yoga, Bikram Yoga. His exact set of 26 postures and two breathing exercises. I believe that he does want that fast food experience and know what they're going to get wherever they go. Vanessa Calder wasn't trained by Bikram, but comes from a whole family that was. Your mother, your father, your sister. And my older brother. And your older brother yes. each paid $5,000 yes. to become a Bikram yoga instructor. Yes, to take his training. And, and then they opened, opened the studio. Calder says the family-run studio was doing well until June of 2002 when the studio received a letter from Bikram's attorneys telling them to immediately cease and desist teaching Bikram yoga or face legal action. It was extremely scary. Bikram claimed that the studio, because it taught other types of yoga and let non-Bikram trained instructors like Vanessa Calder teach classes, was guilty of copyright violations. Can physical exercise really be copyrighted? Bikram has argued in federal court that his precise sequence of yoga postures and breathing exercises should be eligible for copyright protection. Just like a choreographer can copyright the dance steps in a ballet, or a musician can turn a sequence of do re mi's into a copyrighted song. When Quincy Jones, my student, takes same do re mi pa, create a melody, become a song, you can copyright that song. So, so we, I picked up 26 postures, I put in the sequence like a melody. I created that. But Bikram's copyright claims riled the yoga community, and Vanessa Calder organized a group of Bikram instructors to take on the yoga master in court. What we object to is him saying, you cannot teach Bikram yoga if I say you cannot teach Bikram yoga. You cannot teach those poses in that order because I own them. And why doesn't he own them? because yoga is not to be owned. They've existed. Hundreds and thousands of yoga poses have existed for thousands of years. Yoga is free. It belongs to the earth. It's a god. But I picked up a piece of it and I created something. You're saying that you want people who teach Bikram yoga to go to your $5,000 course yes. and get a license yes, first. Yes, they have to. Because this is my personal property. It works. You want to do it, you do the right way. Are you being a little controlling? If you think like that, well, can't help it, son. This past spring, a federal judge agreed with Bikram that a yoga sequence can be copyrighted and that his aggressive stance is well within Chowdhury's rights as the copyright owner. He's the only one in the world. And his business strategy has made Bikram Chowdhury a rich man, living the life of a star, complete with a whole fleet of classic cars he's restored himself. It doesn't seem very yogi-like. Depends which kind of yogi. I'm an American yogi. <laughs> Beverly Hills yogi, to be exact. But this hasn't always been the life of Bikram. He grew up in Calcutta, a city known for its poverty. This is a far cry from Beverly Hills. Yeah, you better believe it. Tina. Although he's been living in America for more than half his life, for Bikram, India, the birthplace of yoga, will always be home. You know, it's the only country in the world, uh, still there is some humanity and spiritualism left. Bikram says that Americans can learn a lot from India, a place where the rich and even the poorest of the poor find the same peace of mind 
through yoga. The philosophy of human life, who you are, human, why you came to this earth as a human, what's the ultimate destination of your life. To understanding all these things, you have to study yoga. It's this philosophy, Bikram says, more than sweat, that he's selling through the mental and physical challenge of his yoga. In America, even you have everything more than anybody else in the world, still you are not happy. Mm, what are we doing wrong? Everything. Like what? Money. Only materialistic success is the success of human life in America. India, no. I like money, you like money, we need the money. But money is not going to bring humanity and spiritualism into your life. Bikram took us to where he got his spiritual start over 50 years ago. This is the main yoga class for me and lots of people. We raised and, and grew up here. Always the teacher, he couldn't resist a chance to instruct. I can see he's doing one little mistake. His hand should not be like that. His hand to Adam, ah, I used to do like this watch. That's I do all my. Mm. Uh. And he showed off just how much his students can endure. Today, Bikram is treated like a beloved son almost everywhere he goes in India. Despite the fact that he made himself into America's guru so many years ago. So I started with nothing, zero. And I never cared for business. You people gave me everything. Why? I make you understand what is the value of me and my country's philosophy to make your life better than anybody's life in the world. Most people would think in Calcutta they have nothing. In Beverly Hills they have Has everything. everything. <laughs> Most of people think. I have everything in Beverly Hills. Why? Because I bring Calcutta to Beverly Hills.